This video is going to cover a bit of the Philosophy 1 unit, specifically uh, beliefs about deity, and it is for the uh, the OCR GCSE exam board. First thing you need to know about uh, is the beliefs about the nature of God. Now the main thing obviously uh, would be the Trinity. This covers uh, the Father, who is the Transcendent Creator, and the Son, this is uh, Jesus, who is imminent and impersonal. Oh no, sorry, and personal. And uh, you know, he came down to earth and lived the human life, etc. And the Holy Spirit is uh, who is, well, not really a who, but uh, it, it's imminent and impersonal. This is the impersonal one. Jesus is the personal one. And it's the Holy Spirit that guides Christians in their you know everyday life and what have you. And uh, another way that you might want to talk about the nature of God is uh, this anagram that my RS teacher came up with. Uh, Boopy TP Jitch. Oh, you cut it off, haven't you? Hold on. Can it move? Yes, it can. Right, I'm not going to read all these out for you because you can just pause and note them down here but um, and find out some of the definitions if you don't know them. But one of them on here, I'm not going to... I don't know, I'm quite pushed on time right now, but uh, one of them means he is um, uh, all-powerful. And in your question E um, questions, you may want to raise the argument on um, the parable of the stone colliding with God, apparently being all powerful, and uh, that would go along something along the lines of the parable of the stone is that, uh, long story short, it's God is all powerful, so He can make anything. He can make rocks. Yes, can He make rocks that are heavy? Yes, can He make rocks that are so heavy that humans can't lift? Yes. Can he make a rock that is so heavy that he cannot lift? Uh oh. If he uh, if he can make this rock, then he's not all powerful because he can't lift it. And if he can't make this rock, then he's not all powerful because he can't make it. If you say yes or no to either of them, there's something that he can't do. Therefore, putting it out there that he's not all powerful. Sorry, mate. And you've got reasons given in support about belief of God. These will cover a range of different arguments. And we've got the ontological argument. Now this basically says that uh, we can't think of anything greater than God. Therefore he must exist. Uh, it may not make sense at first. But it's essentially saying that, so you've got um, person A and person B. Person A has is a very powerful being and he's just made some mystical power. Everyone's saying, well person A must have made it. And someone speaks out and says, hold on, person B is more powerful than person A. He could have made it. But we can't find person B. So person A must have done it. In this case, uh, person A being God and person B being any other explanation for the creation of the universe. God is, uh, at the moment, in our in religion, probably the most, uh, the most logical explanation for the creation of the universe. I'm sure science has its other reasons, ones that I personally agree with, that um, essentially nothing at the moment is more powerful than God and that therefore shows that nothing else could have made the universe. You've got the cosmological argument which is just plain logic, the universe must have come from somewhere, this somewhere must have been God. You've got the theological argument, I can pronounce that right, always mess it up, uh, which is the world is so perfect it must have been designed, designed by who, is who being God. The religious experience argument, I'm sure you can find anyone uh, just off the street even that, that may have claimed to have experienced a miracle and all had their prayers answered, uh, just some form of religious experience. A lot of astronauts experience it apparently when they go into space and see the Earth from a different perspective. They think, my God, there's no way that was a coincidence. You've got the basic moral argument as well, which just says, you know, all humans have a basic understanding of good, right, bad and wrong and saying that this knowledge must have come from God. Let's move this over here. Um, and you've got this chap here, who actually I'll put in here, just in case you want to mention him in, in an argument in question E. He's pretty good when it comes to talking about ontological things, because this this guy, in fact, is called Kurt Gödel, who's a, a close friend of Einstein's. And actually, if you watch the program QI with Stephen Fry, very good program for general knowledge, um, find out that one of the main reasons that Einstein went to work every day was because he enjoyed the walk home with Kurt Gödel. 
obviously I had some very interesting conversations with him, but actually I don't think that is him actually, sorry. Um, you, you just type his name in on Google Images, you'll get, he was renowned for having a multicoloured hairstyle, but uh, Kurt Gödel came up with uh, this, the, it's the ontological formula, and this um, somehow uses reason and reason alone to prove the existence of God. Now, I should point out, Kurt Gödel didn't actually believe in God, so whether there was some secret flaw in the formula that he knew, I don't know. But uh, it would be good to talk about an example of every one of these. You'll find uh, very good uh, examples or, or common examples uh, who supported each of these. Um, the cosmological argument came from Sir Thomas Aquinas. The ontological argument uh, came from St. Anselm of Canterbury, and you'll easily get hold of other ones. And you've got views about uh, the belief in God, sorry, other views about the belief in God, and these will cover the ones that are against God. Uh, you can read, read through these if you want, but um, this one here, if there is a God, whence proceeds so many evils, if there is no God, whence commence any good? It was made by a chap called Boethius, I think that's how you pronounce it, and this basically says that if there is a God, how come there's so many, so much evil in the world? But if there is no God, then how come there's so much good in the world? And uh, he was a philosopher, and philosophers have a habit of contradicting themselves in um, quotes. It makes them sound very wise. And uh, you've got this one here, I can't pronounce that one at all. But um, if God exists, then it would be necessary to invent him. That, uh, I believe, suggests that... Um, Eventually, science would lead to a dead end when trying to explain crea uh, creation of the universe, and we would have to eventually say, "Well, God must have done it." We would have to invent the God if we didn't. If we didn't, um, well, I think I've typed that wrong. Actually, I think if God does not exist, it would be necessary to invent him. So, and you've got uh, old Archbishop of Canterbury here, Rowan Williams. Uh, How can you believe in a God who permits suffering on this scale? This is interesting because it. Um, being the Archbishop of Canterbury, obviously you'd expect him to be quite believing in God. I think there's more to this quote, but um, he actually said this after the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami. Those of you studying AQA, GCSE geography will know uh, this as the Boxing Day tsunami. And this is just a few images that kind of show his point on how, how can you believe a God who permits suffering on this scale. This is before a bit of the tsunami in one area that it, one of the many places that it affected, and this is after it, and this is just another one of the many places affected. Now you've got the concept of miracles. Uh, a miracle is, according to OCR, uh, something that is out of the ordinary, intended by God as a sign of his love and or power. Sorry, I've got the typo there. Uh, it's a marvellous event which cannot have been brought about by humans or nature. It usually shows controls over the control over the laws of nature, and oh, hold on, about that yet? Uh, yeah, it usually shows control over the laws of nature. And for Christians, miracles are quite an important concept because most of it is founded on miracles. You know, God, uh, God being uh, becoming a human, just being Jesus, and he, he, you know, shows control over death as. Um, uh, we'll find out now. Uh, God intervenes through the world through miracles, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, obviously we know that he um, uh, preached a lot of his philosophies on how God would like us to behave. And God actually under, uh, did a few miracles here. Uh, God is walking on water, uh, he's healing the blind, and this is the one uh, from before that we said that um, uh, God can control death. But, um, he raised Jesus, raising Lazarus from the dead. There, and the final one: how the Holy Spirit can uh, has intervened through the world. You've got the disciples here talk, speaking in tongues. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's um, basically well, here's a quote here. Uh, so I should hopefully sum it up for you. But um, the disciples all gathered together, I believe, and they were all from different areas. So just say, for example, I'm not sure if they were from this particular area, but we'll say one, one, say one disciple was from Egypt and he only spoke Egyptian, and you got one of the disciples who was English and he only spoke English. And um, speaking in tongues uh, suggested that um, the person who only spoke in Egyptian could hear the English man speak.
speaking Egyptian and the English man could hear the Egyptian speaking in English. All the disciples were hearing their native language that they spoke and this was the act of the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, hopefully that should cover up um, everything you ideally need to know about the content of um, uh, beliefs of that deity for OCR, GCSE, Philosophy, Unit 1.